Now we're live streaming. All right, thanks uh, for coming to the Word is Right Out Loud poly, uh, LGBTQ podcast um, in conjunction with the Out Loud Anthology, which you can get on rettergreenbooks.com with myself, Starchild, and Dougie Fresh. That's not his actual name. It's just Douglas Keller, um, wonderful poets. Um, today we are talking about um, homelessness in the LGBTQ community. Um, so we're going to have a discussion on that. If you join the room, you can uh, join the discussion. Um, in addition to our anthology, I also wanted to bring up a book from um, a friend of Word is Right, uh, an, another host. It's called On Compassion by Josh Smalls. Um, and it is an entire poetry book on how unhoused um, individuals. However, uh, throughout all of the book, um, he talks about their experiences without using the word homeless once within the book. So it is an awesome, awesome read um, on compassion uh, is another, that's our, you know, trying to sell you something for the day. So my coworkers, how are you guys, or not coworkers, my co-hosts, how are <laughs> you guys doing today? <laughs> doing good. <laughs> uh, you're good, you're great, yeah. Good, good, good. Uh, so today I figured we would talk about um, hom homelessness and the um, LGBT community. So um, recent studies, uh, this one is coming from Ch Chapin Hall um, at the University of Chicago, show that LGBTQ teens are make up 70, I'm sorry, 7% of the youth population. However, they make up 40% of the homeless youth population. Um, and it is known that they are 120% more likely to experience homelessness than a non-LGBTQ youth. Um, and it's not always uh, associated with just their parents um, not approving of their sexuality. I apologize for the cat in the background. Um, she's not hurt in any way. She's just screaming because she wants to. Um, but usually it's not just um, parents not being okay with their children being LGBTQ, um, but it's usually because of family conflict. Um, there's usually, you know, uh, abuse at home. Um, some of them were forced out and ran away. Some of them are having family issues in addition to their own issues with their sexual orientation and gender identity. So um, just opening up the floor, any any comments that you guys want to make on that or anything like that? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll I'll just jump in on that. Um, yeah, I think honestly, I think you froze. Doug, come back. I think we lost him, guys. Okay. Uh, where like, you know, where like you're coming into your your own and your life. I think you're sort of like you're you're really dealing with issues of identity, and that also includes, you know. You know, I think in that in that framework, I think it's like um, it's very you know in terms of like the whole aspect of like you know whether you you know like coming out to people like coming out to your parents or coming out to your friends or you know these are all prevalent issues that I think that particular age bracket te teenagers like that's a very vital that's a very precocious is not there yet and i think in in that in that respect i think it's it's something that um that i, I think kind of goes hand in hand yeah i, I agree you know with like say revealing yourself and, ex and then expecting what some kind of blowback from that admission 
and then having to deal with that and then how it could affect the rest of your life going forward. If it's a negative. reaction if it's a negative reaction i have on you stimmy like that could stimmy your progress as an adult you know and and there's so many things associated with that you know um one of the things that i found and um there was a differentiation between um lgbq and then transgender youth as well in the study that i was reading um but one thing that they found between the two is that um especially with the current uh, climate, a lot of health clinics and facilities are not willing to help um, members of that population, which leads to physical and mental health problems, sure. which um, you know puts more strain on the family unit and, and leads to more homelessness as well. Um, so a lot of people think that, you know, when you think homelessness, you think, just where this person is living, right? And there's so much more that goes into it. Like not having healthcare can lead to homelessness. Um, one thing that I think everyone should remember is that we are always, in America, the way we're set up, we're one step away from homelessness, right? Anything can happen. We talked last month about U Uganda and the things going on there. Um, and a situation where the new laws made it so that landlords didn't want to rent to LGBTQ persons. And so that, that leads to homelessness, right? So it's not always just not being able to pay for housing uh, for these people that causes these issues. Yeah, so I, think, I think it's really important what, what you're pointing out that this isn't you know, it isn't always like a situation where people are getting like kicked out of their houses, but, you know, you can have like just all kinds of economic distress and other, um, you know, family dynamics that don't even have to do with, you know, the specific queerness of the young person that, um, you know, factor into this, um, you know, and of course, like when you talk about like transgender, like, you know, when someone is homeless and in that situation and they're dealing with like, cause so many shelters, um, like for homeless people are run by, you know, basically conservative evangelical Christian groups. And so like, they're not going to respect your gender. You know, they're going to say, well, what are you really? And not let you, you know, shower or, you know, sleep in facilities that are safe for you. Um, because you know because of their like religious beliefs that they like I I just encounter this a lot um, working with homeless people when we used to live in New Orleans um, all of the resources for them are like run by people who are trying to like force their religion on them yeah absolutely um, I, and <laughs> I can attest to that, you know, um, I went to a Catholic college, that's not to say I'm not thankful for my education, um, but when I went to like a therapist there, um, talking about my issues with my sexuality and my mor mor mortality, um, their answer, you know, was to pray and to, 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 you know, read the Bible more and to do this. And sometimes, it's, it, you know, it's good for people to put their faith in something. I'm not saying people shouldn't have faith. Um, but I don't think that was the correct answer in that situation for someone like me. Um, no. And I know that there are people who are much younger who who get that same treatment and it doesn't, it, it's not helping them, right? It's not helping them to fix the family dynamic that they have at home. It's not helping to fix the mental, you know, um, issues that they may have within themselves. Um, and, and you have to remember that yeah. this is on yeah. top yeah on top of the things that are already issues in the home, right? You have, and I don't have the percentage in front of me, but you have a percentage of um, people who are, you know, dealt, deal with sexual assault in the home. And then, you know, in the event, and it is not always the case, uh, but in the event that, you know, let's say it's a father with a son, now that not only are they dealing with the sexual abuse, but they're dealing with that, 
feel the feelings of homosexuality in relation to that abuse as well. So, um, right, and it's not being addressed on a mental health level. Sure. You know, the other thing I, I thought of was this: was um, with respect to like what goes on in the home and and within these like religious organizations, like um, there have been movies of about like uh, conversion therapy. Uh, mm -hmm. I just thought of that. Uh, and that real, that's absolutely frightening to me. Um, that, that a lot, especially in Catholicism and Christianity, they actually have these, these uh, yeah, these like, these actual conversion therapy summits where, where the entire goal is to basically have that particular individual retract you know, forcibly retract uh, their their LGBTQ identity. You know, yeah. and it's 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 absolutely terrifying. And I can't believe that we have that kind of thing happening uh, in this country. You know? yeah. And it, it's um, it's not archaic. Um, a lot of people think like uh, it's an archaic practice, and it's not. Um, our our ex vice president Mike Pence was a big um, proponent for that. Um, he you know voting for um, those type of camps and things and wanting to make them um, federally funded and things like that. So you know we we see where our political climate is, but um, yeah. yeah. And, you know, yeah. why is homelessness such a topic, right? Why do we, uh, you know, why is this something that we're looking at, right? For especially youth, but it, it does affect adults as well. Um, and the truth is, you know, we're seeing record breaking temperatures every day, right? Um, we've seen Texas, Arizona, um, have heat so bad that people are, you know, dropping a heat stroke, even people that are housed. So just imagine what are happening to um, unhoused persons, right? Um, so it, it, it's 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 a devastating epidemic that does not get the uh, attention yeah. that it deserves. Well, it's not just heat. I mean, it's it's really any common weather. Mm -hmm. I mean. I, mean, I I couldn't imagine being out there in the freezing snow or or in the bitter hail. You know, I, I couldn't imagine having to having to have no choice but to have to duck in somewhere because I didn't have a place to live during a hailstorm. Right. For instance. So. Yeah. You know, and like you mentioned, um, they're doing so much to make it it's hostile, right? We've seen it in the architecture where they make the benches so that you can't lay on them anymore. And um, they're putting spikes under uh, mm -hmm. bridges and things so you can't set up camp underneath them. Um, and, and like Star Child mentioned earlier, you know, if you're a transgender youth and you don't have those options, but you try to go to a shelter or something and their options are unsafe for you as well, you know, what other options do you have? And for some people, they turn to crime right? Um, some people think, you know, three hots in a cot, if I go to jail, you know, at least I have a place to stay. But again, in, if you go to prison as a transgender, um, they're going to put you in under your biological um, gender, which you're, you're born as gender or sex, sex, right. not gender, sorry. Um, and, and that causes issues too. So there's really no sense of safety for these children or persons who are LGBTQ that become homeless. <clears throat> right. Yeah, I mean, um, no, it just really speaks to, um, you know, the way that resources are needed specifically for, you know, for this demographic, for, um, for queer um, homeless youth and, um, you know, as, as a specific constituency, um, you know, and having people who are not going to like try to, you know, conversion therapy them and, and like, you know, um, who are available to, to provide support.
absolutely. And um, one statistic that I saw earlier is that of that 40% um, that are usually um, unhoused or homeless, that they were found to be twice as likely to commit suicide um, as well. I've seen even higher numbers um, under the Trevor Report um, or the Trevor Project, sorry. And it, it's it's heartbreaking, right? Because it, it, it's compounding issues, just compounding on each other. Um, it really seems like no way out if you're looking at their situation from the outside, like what what do you expect them to do? You know, um, we have to remember, like we have to be the help for those people. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, I think it's a, uh, yeah. Um, I think it's a collective, uh, I think I think it should be a collective mission, like an overarching mission, to kind of influence the powers that be. Um, because the issue is, you know, you and I are not the power brokers of this country. You know what I mean? And um, the issue comes down to we're having these conversations, and we have the ideas, and we have in our own hearts and minds, we maybe even have the facilities, the facility to want to impact greater change nationwide or even in our own communities but how do we how do we actually actualize that in the positions that we're individually in since we're not making like like we're like we're not making those kinds of calls on the legend right legislative level on the judicial level on the economic I mean how, how can that help or or writing to your local congressperson I mean that's a start but the 2000 I mean are they really gonna of the of this broken system that we're in you know I don't know yeah. What happened? Right, and I, you know, I think that, um, just in the in the thought process about this, it's like, um, I mean, you want to have initiatives that are, you know, just built around the empowerment of the youth themselves, as opposed to like creating, you know, kind of a paternalistic type situation. Um, and the problem is that when you have, um, you know, a private kind of nonprofit industrial complex, like you do in a lot of the cities where, where there's a lot of homeless folks, um, you know, it's like the agenda of the nonprofit is determined by the wealthy, you know, benefactors and, and so the narrative that you have to feed your donors is not necessarily going to be what's actually most effective or most empowering to the youth that are being supported because right. um, oftentimes people that give money to that, they want to feel like they're, they get to be the savior, they get to be the hero or something like that. And um, So that's again one of the dynamics that when you have when our safety net is being outsourced to you know private nonprofits, then you know it skew it can skew um, how they how they do things. Very true. Very true. Yeah. And we got to remember it's not it's not just here in America. You know? The other thing I thought about is this is. Sure. It's like, what about, I mean, their models in other uh, countries? Because I, I think, and I, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but um, it basically talks about, it has to do with 
America's role in globalization and also how other countries treat their citizens? Okay. And I highly recommend it. And this and for, um, homelessness and underrepresented peoples and all that stuff. And, and how, and even, even the prison system, it, it covers, it covers the prison and the, uh, the prison complex in other countries like the European model, like in like Norway, in, in other world nations on instead of It being our design to be more rehabilitated. So that's whether it's prison, whether it's shelter, shelter system, whether it's, you know, is very, uh, and especially youth, it doesn't give a lot of youth, you know, who don't have the, who lack the resources, you know, it doesn't give them those, those, those viable options. Right. Yeah, I mean, and even if you look at the give other themselves a job. Sorry, you keep breaking up. I don't know if you're done or not. <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and America is such a, a double-edged sword, like because we say, you know, well, healthcare is a big part of that. What if we had universal healthcare? Um, you know do we see a, a decrease in these type of things? But then we have to remember that if we had universal health care, then right now the powers that be would love to make it so that LGBTQ persons, you see that they're trying to take away affirmative um, gender affirming care and things like that. So then there would be no option whatsoever exactly. if the government is in yeah. control. <clears throat> so it, it, it's, it's one of those things where you're discussing it, but it's hard to find a resolution for it. Um, and normally I don't like to talk about things unless I have a resolution, um, but it, it's hard. It's hard to figure out what to do for people. Um, I've seen in some cities they're, they're uh, building housing, you know, like tiny houses, communities and things, uh, which is cool. But again, if you're youth, you know, you can't get your own apartment. So you're still not addressing the issue at hand for those persons. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, one thing I'm really curious about is like what, um, you know, whether there are grassroots kind of initiatives out there where, um, you know, we're say like, you know, entities within the LGBT community are, um, you know, providing support and, um, you know, providing resources, um, you know, specifically. Um, as I know that um, there's, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna look up a group really quick. Um, there's one in um, in New Orleans that was called like it was called like Blackout or something. It was like POC um, LGBT folks, um, and I think I think dealt dealing with homeless youth and stuff like that. But I'm gonna look it up really quick and see what they what they're about. There there are a few. Um, there's one called Nest that I, I saw earlier. Um, but that's out of, of uh, it looks like Houston maybe. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And there's another one. Um, True Colors United was another one I was reading about. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Four point two million youth experience homelessness each year. Oh. Do you, do you uh do you have any of the stats from? <clears throat> from when? From any other countries that I mentioned, or countries, or any other developed nations that uh, that us. Yeah, so.
outside of the U.S. But I bet you it's markedly lower. I, I can bet money on that. So let's see. My laptop does not want to be my friend today. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, so, no, um, but yeah, I looked up um, the this uh, youth organization that um, that supports LGBT homeless youth in New Orleans is called Breakout, uh, and it's it's a really cool organization. Um, it's definitely worth checking out, you know, because it's like it's it's a model where um it's like um youth led you know so it's not just um people acting on behalf of lgbtq youth but um but youth you know in leadership roles um uh, you know with support um and mentorship from from adults but um and uh Yeah, they um, they've been doing a lot of good things. I'm just like looking at their Facebook right now. Um, a lot of it is around um, supporting trans folks who are incarcerated and or and or homeless. Um, also, um, also the uh, the immigrant community. Um, there's a lot of like overlap because um, if you want to talk about somebody who's like, super vulnerable like an undocumented lgbtq youth like that's that's like about as like you know vulnerable as you can be like in our country you know where like your existence is criminalized like on so many different levels for sure yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. so it's not giving me any like specific numbers but it does say that um in Europe and mid, uh, middle Asian countries, um, it is lower than the United States. However, in African countries and um, the lower Asian, like India and, and you know the the lower Asian countries, um, it's higher or equal to. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I just I just think it's utterly ungivable. I mean, I I don't I don't even I, it doesn't have to do with even your the age demographic. I'm talking about adults, elderly people. Teens, I mean, it, it it's not it's um, you know, with with respect to all this. You know, it's it's uh it's truly mind boggling to me. And I, I, I don't, I, I can't wrap my head around it most. Whenever I, I come up in, in a conversation with something like this, um, where, whether I'm like, my, actually at my job, my coworkers and I, we talk a lot about this kind of stuff. And it's like, are we the only, these intense, uh, you know, not debates, but crosstalk cross-pollination of ideas, you know, and whether these cross-pollination of ideas can, you know, start at the conversational realm, but then trickle outward to, you know, to actual, to legitimate change, you know, and that's the bind that we're in, um, that people like us, you know, are the, the thinking, you know, the, the intellectuals, the thinking minds, you know, the ones who who have our finger on the pulse 
of these problems, uh, but we're not in positions of power. So what do we do? You know? So. Right. We vote. <laughs> uh, revolt. No, I don't know. <laughs> I said we vote, not revolt. So I'm not trying to start a insurrection. Over here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 we vote. Said revolt. I was like, wait a minute. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm 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 an anarchist, so I'm all about revolting. <laughs> but but voting too. <laughs> I mean, it, homelessness is like you said in any uh, population is ridiculous um it, it surprises me that like veterans don't have how you know there's homeless veterans and, and you wonder how you know they fight for a country or for a country's profits um and, and they come back and they're not housed right so you know um it needs to be fought at, at a higher level as well for everyone um but yeah, just you know, just looking at the numbers itself, um, for LGBTQ, um, and the numbers really show youth. Um, but we are talking about adults as well, and just seeing how it affects um, that community so much more. Um, because it was seven percent, forty percent, like that's that's a big jump, you know, for just between non and LGBTQ persons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had General Lucio, but he left us. Thought he was gonna join the conversation. I know, he just, I know, he, he, left, he, left, he left. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there are a few cities from what I was reading that are working to, to lower those numbers through legislation and making sure that there are outlets um, for those persons, um, which I think it is great. You know, um, when I was growing up, that we had what was called the safe house, um, where if kids ran away, they could run to that location. The doors were locked, like nobody could get in, not parents or anyone. Um, and, and, you know, they had therapists on hand um, to make sure that the, before they let them go home, that they were safe at home, that, you know, resources were set up for them and things like that. Um, and I, I wish that was something that was everywhere. Um, and they had members of the LGBT community that were part of that organization as well. So um, gay or straight, it was a safe space for for kids to go to. Right, right. Yeah, I think there's a lot of um. Yeah, I think that I think that there has to just. Just be more unity, I think, among among between them, and maybe um, you know, I don't know. I think I think like, you know, I know there there's there's such a term as as, as being like an ally, you know, like an ally to that community, which I consider myself one. Um, there are allies out there, and I think the allies have to forge members of, of, of that community. I agree. And then, and more often. You know? yeah, I agree. And I, I think, um, you know, especially with capitalism, it's breeding a uh, sense of individualism with people that the intersectionality is being um people are fighting over it right so um we've all seen recently like uh just hilarious um arguing with a trans woman <laughs> on tiktok um and, and it's like you know she's saying you know i'm black first or i'm gay first like it, it needs to stop having that like we are all of these things at once and all of these things at once need to be safe, need to be uh, held um, 
and taken care of, respected. Amen. Amen. This guy's been feeding his face the whole time. <laughs> what, are you, what are you eating over there? I had some Wendy's. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, we didn't have a lot of people join today. So I mean, I guess it's going to be a short show. Um, unless anybody has anything else that they want to speak on in terms of homelessness. Yeah, so um, I see you looking at uh, Jaws' book. I would love to hear some poetry from that, to be honest. All right. I forgot my camera was on, but... <laughs> All right, I'll just randomly pick one. And this one is called Big City Blues. And when we were young and home and address before our named owned responsibility, when rain meant playtime must wait and windows left room for dreams, even when the sun smiled before the moon begged your pardon with dandelions and unwanted weeds, made the perfect playground before panhandling found our vocabulary and concrete called us occupant. Before we aged past someone's calling, when dinner found a table and shelter from the elements, when warm blankets never touched the sidewalk, handshakes kept us human like hugs that said, I love you. I remember we were young and someone smiled, called us beautiful and handsome when they saw our fingernails innocent without blemish, before party favorites became the first meal of the day, when holidays meant bloodlines and friends and family, and no one saw us less than, or hid their opinion behind a smile, a vague gesture, a heartless invitation, or coins covered in lint and pennies became someone's good day, gave a smile to someone thirsty, a human, a crooked smile and shaking fingers. Remember when bedroom we warm and concrete never played nice to bone, flesh, skin never questioned its purpose. A shield. Oh, there's more. Ha. Blanket or barrier or false setting. A question, no one's answer claimed perfect. When we were young, forgetting tomorrow was easy, especially after supper. Someone's idea of lunch back when bedtime had nothing to do with traffic, footsteps, pedestrians, occupied sidewalks. I saw an empty park bench last week. Wonder who claimed it by 7 p.m. Moments before the last patrol car shined his light from the busy streets my left. When we were young, no one thought today would be the day and no one expected cardboard boxes to drape a bedroom in a park between the buildings and any town or in the heart of a big city. That's the actual end. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. You know, I think I think that's a good connection. Like like yeah, for children, all you know, these things about the way we live just don't make any sense, you know, because they haven't gotten cynical. At the end he's got some animated pages. Pretty cool. But it's definitely a good read on Compassion by Josh Smalls. And as always, our out loud LGBTQ anthology with red or green books that we are all a part of. Let's see if we can put somebody on blast today. Star Child, is your name Star Child in the book? Yep. Ooh, Cerebella Mental. I almost forgot she existed. I wonder how she's doing. Yeah, where's she been at? I haven't heard. I mean, I've been out. I've been out of the loop. So. 
people probably doing things, but I just I just haven't heard from her. Yeah, me either. You gonna read one from the anthology? Yeah. It's called Chocolate Ice Cream. Oh. Yeah, it's by uh yours truly, Star Child. I like to eat chocolate ice cream slowly, especially in New Orleans, listening to Irvin Mayfield play the trumpet, imagining how the trumpet feels to be pressed with such tenderness and blown so gently while I lick the side of the spoon until my lips are covered and I have to wipe them with a napkin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so to... definitely get your guys' copies of this. There's a lot, lot, lot in this book. Doug, are you in this book? My no, I'm not in. You know what? I'm not in any of the red or green books. Those no. hot jazz trumpeteers. No. Yeah, I'm not in them. Um, I I either missed. The submission windows or I, I wasn't paying attention like i i i gotta get in on that yeah hmm. <clears throat> hmm. no i'm just kidding <laughs> but yeah uh well other than doug um everyone is in the out loud out loud anthology um so definitely get your copy if you can from red or green books or from um anyone that you know who is a part of the anthology um I ordered a bunch of them. So if anybody wants one, you can get one for me as well. Um, just, you know, DM us. We'll get you sent out one. Um, Red or Green Books has been doing a lot of important work um, over the last year, not only with this anthology, um, but they've also got the um, gun violence anthology, asking for an end to gun violence. Um, highlight on end to gun violence, not taking away people's guns. Um, so definitely check out redorgreenbooks.com. That's R-E-A-D um, or green. Um, and just, you know, get in. Um, you know, today we were talking about homelessness and how important it is to create safe spaces for each other um, and to try to work together to make change and, and to make things happen. Um, and sometimes, you know, as a poet, you're not sure what all you can do, right? Um, and that's where a lot of these anthologies came through for um, our publisher, Marissa, um, you know, took a lot of these issues to heart as one should um, and said, well, what can we do? We can write. Um, so, um, you know, if that's something you're interested in, you know, definitely get your hand on one. Um, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, what's the funding going towards? Um, so, you know, with the Out Loud anthology, keep in mind that all of the contributors are out there are LGBTQ. Um, so you are supporting an artist who is LGBTQ by purchasing um, your own copy. Um, American Graveyard, the gun violence anthology um, is being used to team up with um, other gun violence uh, organizations that are working um, their best uh, to stop gun violence as well. So funds are be, you know, being doused out that way, as well as sending copies to senators to kind of put the, that information in front of them as well. So don't ever think there's nothing you can do, especially as a writer, as an artist, um, there's something to do. Maybe sometimes just talking about it um, is enough. Um, so before I let anyone go, it is seven o'clock. Um, yeah. And... yeah. <laughs> Any other questions, concerns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I I have a question actually about the um. I have a I have a question about the uh, any anthologies coming up. Um, is there going to be another one uh, at some point? Um. Yeah, I believe so. I believe there have been talks about different anthologies. Um, I'm sure, you know, it, unfortunately, uh, funding is an issue, right? Yeah. Uh, so right now, a lot of the funding is going into the American graveyard and trying to get that into the right hands of people. Um, yeah. But um, 
I'm sure when there is one, it'll be blasted out. I'll make sure that you know that there is. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I want. For sure. Right. I want to definitely uh, send some stuff in from the can. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we're going to end the live. If Marissa is there, end the live. Oh, she's been talking to us. Okay, hang on. Let me see how I can do that. Yeah, she has it.